الرحيم الحمد لله وبه نستعين على امور الدنيا والدين والصلاه والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد respected beloved professor arif my colleagues sisters and brothers the professors the lecturers and everyone Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh First and foremost, I would like to thank both Brother Muhammad Zahid, the President of Malaysian Student Association and Brother Ahmed, the other organizer for putting the program together and on top of that, I would like to put on record my greatest appreciation and gratitude to Professor Arif and your team your colleagues for having me uh, in this afternoon uh, to share some of the perspective, uh, some of the ideas, uh, some of the issues uh, in say, banking and finance and perhaps some economics uh, to some extent. Though I'm not the expert uh, on the Islamic economic part of the discussion. Uh, I'm here not to teach you uh, because you have great lecturers and great professors around you. I'm here to share with you the proper mindset, if you like. What would be the right mindset for us to uh, push the Islam Finance forward? Islam Finance has been in the industry uh, for the last four decades, from 1975. You wanted to start from the establishment of the first commercial bank in Dubai and the multilateral development bank, which is IDB, in 1975, followed by the two Takaful companies in 1979, both in Sudan and uh, Dubai, Salama Insurance, respectively. And these were the first seed that our founders have put to grow the tree of state finance and banking. And every one of us, we owe them a great deal because they took the risk, particularly the private sector, not the IDB. For IDB, the Russian government and the Saudi government, they were the first to uh, seed funders to set up the first Islamic Development Bank in Jeddah. Uh, but the private sector, interestingly, uh, it was uh, uh, initiated by one individual. That's why sometimes in Islam, we need one or two individuals that can change the world, that can change the landscape of the world. And uh, Sa'id al Luta, he's still alive. May Allah protect him and give him the help. Uh, he was the first to put his own money uh, to set up Dubai Bank in 1975. He took all the risks. And we have to salute him. We have to say thank you, sir, for taking lead it, uh, the, the leadership. And he was the first, he was the same person who went to Bahrain to set up the Saint Bank in Bahrain. And uh, it's a good uh, anecdote uh, in Bahrain because there were no Islamic banking law in Bahrain and uh, the government of Bahrain was not ready to give the license for him and they have uh, brought the case to the king, his majesty uh, about uh, this application to set up Islamic banks uh, in, the, in Bahrain and uh, the king was asking his advisor who is this person? He said, well, this person is not from Bahrain he is coming from Dubai. He wanted to put his money. His money? Yes. If his money allow him to put the, the, the money and set up the, the bank in Bahrain. Because everyone was afraid to take the risk. That's why uh, I was not uh, uh, comfortable uh, with many uh, people not putting the right attitude and gratitude to the founder. We have to appreciate what they have done. Though... Their way of doing things might not be in line with our expectation and our vision because they have taken all the risks without any law, without any accounting standard, without any risk management, without any protection by the central bank of both Bahrain and UAE then. So this was the first uh, initiative and the rest is the history in Kuwait, in Malaysia, in Turkey a few years after that. Though you are latecomer, but uh, I have to congratulate the Turkey for uh, creating the new concept of 
Al-Bunuk At-Tasharukiyah, the party's position bank, given the, uh, the, the legal constraint, and now you have about four or five or six uh, institutions with 5% uh, market share, which is, which is uh, something that I wanted to congratulate you. Of course, 5% is not good enough, but you have something to achieve. It's a good news and bad news. Good news is that you have many things can achieve. Bad news is that you have a long time to achieve as well. So it's up to you in what way you wanted to see the market in, 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 uh, in Turkey. Isan Banking and Finance has many components. We have the banking and finance, uh, taking deposit and providing financing. We have also the capital market uh, in terms of uh, putting the right infrastructure for people to invest direct in the investment uh, through stock market and the fund. And of course, uh, the, the many uh, principle of Islamic investment through ETF, through the mutual fund, uh, through a such a product, and of course, not to mention the Sukuk, which is Islamic debt capital market. It's a debt instrument, but it can be traded in the market. Unlike the banking instrument, banking is not negotiable. It's between you and the bank. And the instrument is kept for the next 5 to 10 years and 20 years. That's why the cost of funding from the bank will be higher because it is not negotiable. The more the product become negotiable, the cost of fund will go down and down due to the liquidity, as you know. Liquidity will push the price down and down. So we have equity, we have fund, we have stock, uh, we have sukuk. We have also insurance or takaful to complement the protection of the risk, either life or the property and the, you know, from flood, from the uh, theft, marine and so on and so forth. In between, there are many other segments that a student of Islamic law cannot take for granted. The risk management, we have the Basel tree. Uh, in order to understand both the capital market, the banking and insurance, you have to understand the Basel tree. And it's equivalent under Sharia perspective, the standard issued by Islamic Financial Services Board, IFSB in Malaysia. Uh, you have also treasury uh, product to manage asset liability. Because uh, the life for, for any industry is asset liability. If your uh, deposit is 100 million, your asset is 200 million, you are gone. Or uh, the other way around. I have seen many banks in Middle East, in Saudi before this, they have the, the, the asset, sorry, they have the liability of, let's say, 1 billion Saudi real. The asset is only 100 million. So it's asset liability management. So what they need to do, they have to take Islamic deposit and put in conventional product. And we, the scholars, have allowed that for some of the bank because there were no sufficient asset in the market. So asset must grow together, the liabilities, deposit, and the, and the assets of financing. So you cannot be pushing deposit, deposit, deposit. The money comes to the bank, and you cannot give out to the financing. In Japan, in Germany, they have a lot of uh, deposit. They have to go for negative interest. You have to pay the money. They have to pay interest for the bank to keep your money. So this is not proper asset liability management. Sharia is only one component of asset banking and finance. You have to put in the risk management. You have to put in the accounting. You have to put in the treasury. You have to put in the right people, right talent to manage the whole thing. And Sharia scholars and Sharia discipline. Only if we are able to do all of this, can we call ourselves Islamic finance you know, a movement. So it, it requires more than the talent, more than the sharia. It requires a lot more to put the infrastructure. So in, in our title today, it is time to embrace Islamic finance. Islamic finance is not limited to banking. It's, it's open, it should include the capital market, which is in Turkey uh, in the beginning of the journey. Uh, and this is something, the missing link in, 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 in Turkey, because investment culture for Islamic product is not there yet. Uh, many people are pushing for the banking and finance, but not for investment. So we have to work harder to create Islamic fund, mutual fund, such a products, 
and hopefully Sukuk in the market. And this is something that the time has come for the Turkish uh, government agencies, professors, uh, the investors to really look into uh, in make, into how uh, to make Takaful and the capital market uh, flourishing in this uh, part of the world. Other than Islamic countries like Turkey, Malaysia, we have seen the Western world. Uh, we have the first wave in the in the in the in the early 90s. Uh, we have many banks come. Some of them disappear. Some of them are still around. And now we have seen the second pace uh, from Japan, from Australia, from Europe, and uh, we, big names coming to the market to be part of the whole industry. Why are they coming to this part of the world? Why are they coming to Islamic finance and banking? You might be asking me why. I don't have the answer for that. But my common sense answer, based on the demography of Muslim population, the future salary earners and the investor will be Muslim population. Because in many parts of the world, the young population uh, started to uh, decrease and started to uh, deplenish and, uh, and there's no more uh, young population in Japan, in Europe to some extent. So uh, the Western world would have seen that the potential in the next 10 to 20 years will be this young generation coming to the workforce, earning the money, getting married got children and they got to put the money in the bank, they have to invest in the uh, ecosystem for them to grow for the future. But if a nation has no young population, banking will be irrelevant. Okay, because uh, if we don't have people earning and somehow there's no young population in that country, in fact, we have Muslim immigrant or otherwise, and this happened to be Muslim, they are looking for Sharia compliant products. Uh, and no wonder why World Bank and IMF are putting serious agenda to become, if not better, but equal to IDB. So they are putting the resources, they are putting the research, they are putting the instrument uh, to tap into Islamic financial world. And this is something I have seen. I travel a lot from uh, one country to another, uh, talking to many uh, regulators of the world, the IMF of the world, the World Bank of the world, the IFC in, uh, in many Muslim countries. Uh, they can see the projection of the future. The projection would be banking still, but the young population would be from Muslim country. And uh, Muslim, as you know, they would prefer to have Sometimes prefer, sometimes they would ask for Sharia compliant products and services. So the time has come for everyone to embrace this uh, challenge. What is challenging as we speak is the Islamic economic part of it. We have been talking about uh, Islamic finance, banking. But uh, as Prof. Arif was uh, alluding to the point that what would be the new definition of Islamic economics? And Prof has given the definition, it's a natural economics. And I was trying to get his uh, idea before we came in, uh, while having a good uh, outdoor just now. I wanted to hear from him later on, how does he define Islamic economics? Because this is something which is not clear to me. How does do uh, how, how, does we de how do we define Islamic economics at the end of the day? Demand and supply, uh, balance, uh, uh, allocation of uh, resources, natural or otherwise, uh, equilibrium in terms of capitalism. I, for one, I would support for capitalism more than socialism because in Islam we have to allow people to have the ownership. We have to allow people to compete. We have to allow people to grow their businesses, give them the incentive. Government role is to facilitate the businesses, provide the toll road, the warehousing, the free tax zone, 
proper security so they, have, they feel secure when they come to, to do the businesses and the proper financial system, due diligence, know your customer, no money laundering, no terrorism kind of uh, funding, the job of government to put all, all the infrastructure. Because the businesses cannot do on their own, they need the support of the government. They have the capital, they have the desire to develop the country, power plant, hospital, and it's up to the government to put the policy. But we need to encourage more capitalism coming to our part of the world. The problem of capitalism is not the desire to develop the business, but the human conduct. When they try to cheat, fraud, and they are not Dishon they are not honest, they are dishonest, and they try to avoid the proper accounting standard. They try to show the balance sheet is good, blue, and profitable, whereas uh, the company is not making uh, great the way they put the, the treatment of accounting. And that's why everything has happened in the past. The world has collapsed because due to human governance. And that's why Basel and the uh, accounting standard, the uh, International Financial Reporting Standard has come strongly asking all the banks and the companies, both financial and non-financial, to have mark-to-market. Mark-to-market was absent in the past. So you can say, well, I'm a company, I have few fleet of ships operating from uh, Istanbul to, let's say, uh, Jeddah. But no one is putting the mark-to-market for the ship. Old ship, new ship maintenance, the quality of the engine, no one would go there and, and, and put the accounting on the engine, even on the, on the painting of the ship to that extent. Everything should be accounted for after the crisis. This is the new capitalism. This is the new way of how we should respond to the need of business. Islam is pro-business. Islam is again holding the capital. If you have the money, you have to invest. Of course, if you are uh, risk adverse, you put in the banks because the bank is to protect the capital protection. People having a lot of money for investment, they will not come to the bank. They will go to the direct investment. They will go for stock market, property, gold and some other asset. They will buy the shares. They will be the, the, the minority and majority owner of Coca-Cola, Sony, uh, Apple, this is the, the real investment. Or they set up new, new company IPO. Banking is needed to facilitate liquidity and capital protection. Okay, so coming back to the whole system, we need to encourage business development. Can ISET Bank help? Yes, but in very limited uh, sense. Uh, this is my own uh, theory that is a bank should help the traders to get the right financing, murabaha, ijara, uh, securitization of receivable under Sharia way, uh, LC, the LG, back-to-back <coughs> uh, -back LC, to help the traders to get the proper financing. If not financing, the proper guarantee by the, by the bank for them to get the proper facility from other bank. This is what is a bank should do to support the real trading activities and not to become traders themselves. They cannot be competing against the real traders in the market. If you allow a state bank, many of the thinkers, philosophers, scholars and economists, they were saying a state bank should do more, should do equity, should do real trading, take the risk when they, they bought the asset from Japan, they have to take the risk of shipping from Tokyo all the way to Istanbul. They have to pay the insurance risk. They have to pay the freight cost. They have to pay the um, environmental cost when the ship, uh, you know, uh, uh, produce the carbon, the, the C2, C02. They have to pay the cost for that, pirate risk at the moment, and uh, uh, warehousing delivery. If we expect our central bank to do that, the spread they are going to charge on the customer is no longer 4 or 5 percent. It will be much, much higher, 10 to 20 percent, which the, uh, the, the actual traders would, would, would be exposed to in any case. So we have to understand the limitation, and I would like to put a motion to all of you. We need to relook into the very function of Islamic Bank. 
Isan Bank is needed to take the deposit, mobilize the deposit in the society, make sure the money is not kept under the pillow, is not kept under the carpet. They come out to the market, the bank can use the money, some of them, some of them for capital protection, they put and they take out tomorrow for, for easiness, security from theft, from the criminal offences. A, a pool of them can be used to finance the, the murabah ijara for short-term financing. This is what an, a bank should do, and they should do it properly. The problem, uh, I've seen in many parts of the world, many uh, hub of Islamic finance, most of the financings uh, so far has been focused and concentrated on non-productive asset. What do, what do I mean by non-productive asset? Uh, most of the uh, financing has gone to property financing, credit card, personal loan, and perhaps vehicle financing. And you put them together, uh, it can... Uh, it can, uh, um, it can be uh, amounting to about 70 to 80 percent of the whole balance sheet of the banks of the world. So, so how do the traders got the financing, the contractors, the operators, uh, because they are requiring more than you know, the consumer financing. Uh, relatively speaking, it's easy to finance people to buy the property because everything is collateralized. You give the money and the murabaha, you take the property as a charge. And in Malaysia, they have the mortgage uh, takafu scheme. When, if he were to die and he were to uh, be involved in the accident uh, with a permanent disability, the insurance takafu will settle the, the outstanding payment under murabaha. Very safe. That's why banks are rushing to finance property. This should stop. So my, my, my point of view, bank, say banks in Malaysia, Middle East, I'm not sure about Turkey, they have to put a proper allocation between consumer goods financing and the productive financing. If we can do this, we can uh, uh, readjust and reallocate uh, asset allocation. Uh, can you repeat that? Okay. If a bank can uh, uh, redesign their financing strategy to focus more on financing real trading activities or real productive asset by involving in project financing, trade financing, buying and selling goods from overseas, helping the uh, exporter to get the money to finance the salaries of the staff, to get the working capital requirement, and if they got stuck with the cash flow, we have the cash flow, new financing, which we don't have at the moment. Many of our uh, contractors are stuck because of the cash flow management. They have done the job. They have uh, built the hospital. Government take longer time to pay them for three-month delay. They're stuck. They cannot pay the consultant. This is the missing link in the society. So we should be coming and see the whole value chain and try to help. This is what SM Bank should do. Conventionally, they don't care. The time is coming. You have to pay on time. But we, as banking, we don't do real trading. We, don't, so we are not supposed to do equity financing. We do whatever we are good at, financing the real trading. So the value chain financing. This is something I'm, I'm hoping to articulate more and more so that we know our strength and our weakness. We are not a professional investment. If we ask as a banker to invest in the shipping company, in the IT, in fintech, in what have you, they are not trained to, impact, to put your money in the right investment. They are credit officers. They know how to access the credit of the borrower, quote and unquote, or obligo, or the customer in Islamic banking perspective. So this is what uh, is missing. I hope you can agree with me. If you cannot agree with me, you have to agree with me. <laughs> uh, this is a new uh, you know, way of saying things. I mean, jokingly, I mean, uh, more than happy to have the disagreement because we have to challenge one's another opinion. Okay, the third element, uh, because we are talking about the right time for the right industry, 
Prof has started with Islamic economics. Uh, I wanted to hear more from you, from Prof himself. How does we make connection between Islamic finance and, and economics? I have a few su suggestions. First, we have to connect to halal industry. First thing, we have to connect Islamic finance to the halal industry. The assets of Islamic banking and finance worldwide is around 1.7 trillion US dollar trillion. But the asset of halal is around 2 trillion, 2 to 3 trillion. So we combine the two, we can have about 4 trillion. Okay, 4 to 5 trillion, that is good for Islamic banking asset. I have uh, developed a few products for trade financing, either trade financing fund or trade financing products, about 17 products altogether. Uh, managing the whole value chain of the trade financing from the production of the goods to be exported all the way to the payment, securitization, and the case of restructuring of the cash flow. Okay, and you know how much the amount of trade financing in the world? It's around 70 to 80 trillion US dollar. If we can take 10% of that, and they are simply compliant. Mm -hmm. Buying goods, wheat, uh, you know, raw material, cement and uh, steel, they are real, they are Sharia compliant. But we don't, I mean, in terms of asset and, 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 and whole value chain, but it's said banking and finance is very far from trade financing, not more than 10% worldwide. And this is something uh, I would like to share with you. I would like to encourage uh, everyone to do some research. Uh, we need to put it's said banking and finance. Uh, on the face of the map, not to mention the Sukuk, which is doing very well. Uh, I think I have no complaint with Sukuk. They are very, very uh, good in the market. Uh, we have about 60 billion outstanding Sukuk in the market, though we have a uh, slowdown due to the oil price, but they are still okay compared to banking and, and finance. We are still confined and trapped in a very uh, comfort zone of financing consumer goods. Okay? And in many countries, uh, whenever you give the financing to government officer, they will cut the payment from the salary. As if there's no risk to, to the bank. Anyone can become a banker. I mean, I hope I'm not uh, making any, everyone offense, offended, but the banker should do more, should do more research, should do, take the risk, not that much risk, the risk within their ambit and parameter of doing things, financing the rate trading. The fourth element, I will stop at this uh, juncture. Talent development. We are saying that the time has come for is back end finance and capital market and you know trade financing and real trading. But are we ready to understand the whole lot of banking, capital market, insurance, risk management, uh, treasury management, and so on and so forth. Uh, of course, we cannot be pessimistic. We should be positive. But we have to ask ourselves, uh, in, in the curricula of the university, we have to see the correlation between the, uh, the academic content and the, and the industry uh, practice. It cannot be... Uh, less than 30 or 50 percent correlation. It's good to build up the foundation of knowledge, but you should be able to bring the correlation between what is taught in the university and what is being practiced in the market. We take the example of Ijara, uh, leasing, we talk about operating lease and financial lease, we have to connect back to the accounting standard, risk management measurement, credit scoring, how does we give the credit for Ijara on vehicle, vis-a-vis -vis ijarah on a uh, on uh, airplane or uh, aircraft or shipping two different risks altogether so we have to be able to understand and teach our students though they are based on leasing but the underlying asset could have different uh, risks altogether that students should be exposed to and not to mention the currency risk not to mention the uh, legal risk of any jurisdiction uh, taking the Islamic financing using ijara or leasing contract. So I wanted to impress that correlation must be improved. 
when the student uh, is, is being interviewed uh, for their job, the prospective employer will be happy to see that that student, that candidate, is very much aware of the issues in the market. He knows how to talk about Eastern Banking and Finance, not only in terms of definition, not only in terms of uh, uh, normal issues in the market, but he's able to articulate. He's, he's aware of PER or IR in terms of Eastern Banking as a reserve. He's aware of asset base, asset back. These are the terms that uh, should be used in our uh, training and discussion in the classroom. Uh, only then, I think we are welcome to come to this age, the age of asset banking and finance. I think the conventional system is uh, ill at the moment. They are looking for a new system. Still, they are big, they are strong. They can rehabilitate themselves quickly. They can improve quickly. That's why the Basel Tree is coming to give them a new uh, prescription to be healthy again. Prescription by Basel Tree is for everyone, Islamic or conventional. But uh, it was meant for conventional more than Islamic. But we have no choice. We have to comply with the, with the risk uh, uh, management regime under Basel Tree. Basel Tree is about two things. The asset of a bank or bank should be liquid and should be solvent. These are the two vertical of Basel Tree. You have to be liquid all the time and you have to be solvent all the time. If a bank were to finance property of the, in the balance sheet 80%, they're not liquid anymore. Property is not liquid asset. When people default in terms of property financing, you cannot sell the property to anyone within two months or three months. Liquid, you are able to sell your asset within one week to one month. Solvent, your asset should be marked to market. And uh, in the past, if you have exposure to, uh, let's say, to a property, to factory, no one cares about mark to market. But now, everything should be calculated, accounted for, based on the professional valuation of the asset in the balance sheet of the bank. This is the new challenge. You cannot be working away from the challenge. You have to be aware of the challenges and try to improve your backyard, your own uh, uh, you know, uh, forte, so that uh, the enemy will not come from your backyard or from your uh, main door of the industry. Uh, Basel III is very serious. It's coming in 2019, and uh, we have to work within the Basel III at the same time, we have to be uh, competitive. We have to offer uh, cost-effective products. Otherwise, our customer will run away from this industry. And uh, we have to take another 20 years to uh, regain the high ground of the industry. The confidence has lost. And the moment we have lost the confidence, normally people take about 20 years to get back the confidence. So hopefully, we are not getting that uh, to that level. Hopefully we can sustain the, the progress, but make sure the talent in our community is good enough, is being developed. I'm more than happy, Prof, to put my effort, my time to work together with your faculty to see in what area we can improve the syllabus and in what area we can make sure that the syllabus is uh, watertight and can produce uh, you know, the best class of the ESET bankers uh, in the future. With that, thank you very much. I would like to thank again the the university uh, for this uh, uh, session. I'm more than happy to take uh, all the questions from you. Be frank, be honest, and be engaging for the sake of knowledge, as Prof was saying. Take the opportunity to learn by asking, by having conversation. This is the shortest way, smartest way to gain knowledge. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.